Hello and welcome to another Small Gold live stream. It is the 27th of April 2019. It is Saturday and it is Saturday Night Silver with Small Gold. Each and every Saturday night we drop the economics, we drop the gold, we drop the cryptocurrency stories, we drop the news of the day, and we focus on silver. Tonight we're going to talk about a very pedestrian coin, a very boring coin to many, uh, one that has no numismatic value whatsoever. It's very rare. There's not really even a key date in this coin. This is the 90% silver Roosevelt dime. We're going to give an overview of it. And we also have with us tonight, we have Bernie, but he's going to be on a short leash. We let him do the entire Saturday Night Silver with small gold on his own while I went out to the pub with Seamus and uh, he handled the Franklin half dollars. I don't think he did a bad job, but he was not very good at even attempting to sell them. He was saying they should be free and he said a lot of things that I probably would not have wanted him to say. But tonight we have him here with us and he's going to talk about, because uh, he's a big fan of FDR, uh, he knows next to nothing about silver or money, but we'll get his point of view on FDR and maybe even an endorsement that if you're interested in these coins, that maybe you could buy them. Obviously, he wants them to be free, but uh, well, let's see what he has to say. I'll bring him into the conversation a little later on. All right, so the reason I want to talk about this coin is a lot of people are always talking about if there is some type of economic calamity collapse and they use these arguments as to why they would never buy cryptocurrencies or digital assets because God forbid the lights go out, you can't use them. Okay. Now, if there is such an issue, which type of coin would you like to have for barter? And I can think of no better coin than the Roosevelt dime. And I'll explain why. Because first of all, unlike quarters and half dollars, the quarters have changed. At least the back of the quarter has changed over time. Uh, the half dollars, they're not even in circulation. They're in circulation, but they're not making them anymore. They haven't made them for like since 2000 for general circulation. Most people don't use 50 cent pieces. The 90% Roosevelt dime is identical in every way, shape, and form since 1946. They have not changed. You know, nickels have changed a little bit. Uh, pennies have changed the back, but the Roosevelt dime has stayed consistent. So a 90% silver dime is easily discernible. Not just by, it's not really discernible by look, uh, but by the fact that a date of 1964 or earlier will mean that it is a 90% silver coin. Now, that's important. The only drawback I can see to a 90% silver dime is while it says 10 cents on it, it doesn't have one-tenth of an ounce of silver in it. It has to be precise, 0 0.07234 ounces of pure silver. So that makes it a little difficult to figure out exactly how much the coin is worth. But there's many websites out there, including Coinflation, Coininflation, that will tell you how much that silver is worth. Or you can even do a 0 0.07234 ounce times the current uh, price of silver, and you'll get the value of the coin. So today... That coin is worth between a dollar nine and a dollar ten, which is pretty good. So you have basically a dollar and a very small, even more than a dollar, ten percent more than a dollar, in a very small dime. And you can, um, that's a good barter. That's a good thing, Bernie. That's right, Bernie. That is a good thing. Um, well, that's because you, you've got the, the best president ever in the world. No, no, that's not the reason. Okay, shh. The, the dime is a good thing because a dollar is a very good, if you think about it in your day-to-day -day life, you use cash, having dollar bills is, are a good thing, as Bernie would say. So there you can see it. So it's worth about a dollar nine, and that's at prices that are low. Currently, we know that's a price when the price of silver is just about $15 an ounce. So to have them even today be worth a dollar ten, that is indeed a very good thing. So if you're bartering, you have um, a, a decent amount. Now, if you were to buy one-tenth ounce silver coins you could not get them like right now you can buy dimes and i'll leave the links there are below from the merchants that i use as affiliate links 
you can buy these dimes, a hundred of them, for about dollar fifteen each, maybe on the outside a dollar nineteen, depending on how you pay. Whether you use credit card, check, cryptocurrencies, you're you're gonna pay about. You're not gonna pay a dollar nine, but you're gonna you might pay as low as a dollar twelve, depending on the merchant. And generally, if you buy a hundred of them, you're gonna be over a hundred dollars. And these bullion dealers will give you free shipping, so it is a good deal. So you can get them. And you have them and they're available to barter. But the one-tenth ounce coins are not a good deal. The one-tenth ounce silver coins. They may be pure silver, 9995 or 9999. But first of all, no one's going to recognize them. They're not going to be sure that they're silver. And the real kicker is they go for like two and a quarter, $2.30 each. So it's a much bigger premium. So it's interesting with the these dimes is... Because they're already made, there's no premium on them. They were made by the U.S. Mint. They don't charge a, my, a small a premium because they're smaller. And so many of them were made in 1964. In fact, the Denver Mint in 1964 made over a billion of them. 1.357 billion. The Philadelphia Mint almost made a billion of them. So they made over 2.2 billion of these coins in 1964. Now you would think that uh, there might be some dates within the Roosevelt catalog from 1946 to 1964 that might be rare and somehow worth more than just the melt value. But there really aren't. Um, there are dates, just like we saw at the Franklin Haas, that are relatively rare, but they have no premium on them. And if you do buy like a 100 of them or a 1,000 of them, I'm sure you can pick through them and find some of these dates. But the rarest date is 1955. And it's relatively rare. It's 12.4 12 million. I mean, it's not no coins. Um, so that year, they made 12 million in Philadelphia, 13, 14 million in Denver, and 18 and a half in San Francisco. Most of the years, they made 50 million, 100 million, 200 million. And then, of course, 1964, they made 2 billion. They did make uh, almost. They made more than 500 million of them in 1963. They made about four, over 400 million in 1962. A very plentiful coin, but still, they serve their function. But let's take a look, though. We can't take a look, but we can only try to guess. Even though billions and billions of these coins were made. Bernie, hold on, hold on, hold on. Even though they made a lot of these coins, um, there were two periods in time in their history where we don't know how many of these were melted down. And in 1980, when the price of silver went to $50, there, there was a line to melt these things. The only thing that saved them probably from just getting entirely melted down is that $50 price didn't stick very long. It's the subject of another story maybe we'll do on the Hunt Brothers and that whole fiasco. But also, just more recently in 2011... A lot of these dimes hit the hopper and were melted down again. And I think what saved them then also was that price rise. You know, it happened a bit. It, it went up during 2010. It hit its peak in early 2011. And then it fell off. And the melting, you know, slowed down. But the one thing I would say about these coins, though, is they probably, I mean, no one knows how many are out there. And you can still get them. For at the merchants I mentioned, I think the SD Bullion has 64 cents over spot. They're still relatively cheap, and I would imagine the next time the price spikes, more of these will just be dumped in and melted down for their 90% silver. So perhaps at some point, the rarer dated coins, which you can get just thrown in, they don't sort the, the, the Roosevelt dimes. So when you buy a, a bag of junk silver, Roosevelt dimes, no one's gone through them to say find the key dates. Whatever's in there is in there because there aren't really. They're not considered key dates. It's not worth picking them out to try to get the key dates. Um, me, I, I'm saying I'm not guaranteeing you that they don't pull out the coins, but I'm pretty sure that's custom in the industry that they just collect Roosevelt dimes. They put them in piles. They retube them. They rewrap them. They put them in bags, and then people buy them. All right, what else about this coin? As I mentioned, it's the same design. Um, 
It's worth about a dollar ten today. You can buy them for about a dollar twelve. About it's probably the best price you're going to get from those vendors or any vendor. And um, what else do we have? That's about it on the coin. I want to see what you guys think about the what you how you think they would trade in a barter situation. As I mentioned, their only issue, as far as I could tell, is they're a dime, but they're not a tenth ounce. Um, there's 0 0.07234 ounces, but I think they're highly recognizable. They're small. They don't take up a lot of space. Um, you know, if you have a hundred of them, that's a thousand dollars. That's you know, that's not bad to have in an emergency if you can collect that many of them. And again, the, if you want to collect them by dates, you could probably put together a, a full set of these coins. Not that it's worth anything, just for fun, I guess. If you like to pick through coins and and stick them in folders or something, but they can provide and they're probably good for kids you can show kids them because you don't have to worry that they're they could be handled they don't have any uh numismatic value uh, but yet yeah, it's interesting to see that they are dated 1946 through 1964 so i'm going to turn it over to bernie and he's going to tell you a little bit about uh his hero franklin roosevelt bernie what do you what do you think of uh franklin roosevelt well, well, Lewis, first of all, I just want to say that uh, the other night, I told you I felt un uncomfortable trying to sell things to people. Because if they don't have the money, then you shouldn't be charged. Bernie, Bernie, calm down. I asked you what you thought about Franklin Roosevelt. So please talk about him, and that's what you're here for. You're not here to give one of your, your rants. All right, so Franklin Roosevelt, oh, so, sorry. Look, people, just buy the damn dimes. All right, Lewis, is that what you want me to say? Buy the dimes. No, no. Just tell us about Franklin Delano Roosevelt. All right. You don't want me to tell them to buy the dimes? No, you just did. Okay. Look, Franklin Delano Roosevelt was one of the great... No, he was the greatest president ever. He was a democratic socialist like myself, and he was part of the 1%. And he led this country through horrible times, and yet... When he was done, he was four-term president, and no one has ever done that before. So that is why we celebrate Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And I understand that when Franklin Roosevelt was put on the dime, that the Republican Party was very upset, and they were saying that this man should not be on the coin. I say he should be on all the coins. They should take Franklin Ro Roosevelt, uh, Ben Franklin off the damn half dollar and put that damn kite back in his garage because he started... Bernie, Bernie, calm down. Calm down. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to have to cut your mic off because I, I just want you to tell us about Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Right. Okay. Well, I, I, I was saying that he was the best president. And uh, he's on the dime. And he's still on the dime. And uh, on the back. If you look at the back. Can you bring up a picture of what's on the back of the dime? Yeah. Hold on. Let me see. Yeah. It's fascist, I believe. You got the... the Fascism, the fascist, the fas species, I think they're called. Isn't that what they call Bernie? That's right. So when Franklin Roosevelt was president, he was a democratic socialist. And he was fighting the Nazis and, and Hitler. He was fighting Mussolini and the fascists. And unfortunately, he was fighting Uncle Joe, Joe Stalin in uh, Russia. And uh, what you see here, these are the, these were also on, I believe, the dime before, the Mercury dime. They are the, the, uh, old Roman or maybe even Etruscan uh, symbol for uh, government power and the bumble the bundle of sticks is what they have there but for some reason they don't associate the these uh, bundles of sticks the same way that people look at a Nazi symbol I'm not sure why that is but uh, I, I, I I'm not con I'm not concerned about it because Roosevelt is on the front and he was the best president we ever had and if I become Bernie you're not campaigning. Okay, thanks a lot. All right, well, I, I, I can't hear that all night. So anyway, yes, the indeed, the facies are on the back of the Roosevelt dime. Not sure whose idea that was, but that's been on the dime now since 1916 because the Mercury dime had a very similar a rendition of the facies. Also an interesting point. He mentioned Joseph Stalin. Uncle Joe. <laughs> I 
Well, the guy who, um, let's see if I can show you on the picture. Let's see if we can pull up. No, you can't see it there. These are very horrible pictures. Uh, the initials of the, no, you can't see it. The guy who, who invented or crafted the picture, uh, designed the reverse and designed the front of this dime. His name was uh, John Sinek, and a lot of people thought that was Joseph Stalin. I'm not quite sure if that is a apocryphal story or not. <clears throat> but in any event, there is the uh, the Roosevelt dime. I want to know what you guys think, primarily about their marketability. I mean, they're very cheap to buy. There, there's no two ways about that. And the question is, do you buy them so that you can sell them back for cheap? Do you buy them so you can potentially use them as insurance? Do you buy them because you think maybe they'll melt them down even more and they might somehow become worth something numismatically? Because they were saying that in 1980, there was a backlog to dump millions of these things into the hopper and then the price basically made it all of a sudden not as attractive um, I think the next time the price rises, more more of these will dumped in, be dumped in. Let's see what you guys are saying tonight. All right, what do we got here? Let me see if I have any other charts or um, information for that I didn't cover. I get I get flustered when Bernie's on because he uh, he's always grandstanding about the one percent. Yeah. If you want to look for that JS, it's at the ne the bottom of the neck. It's hard to see, but it's at the bottom to the left of the date. You can see the JS there. In this picture, I think you can see the face she's better. All right. Now well, we got the normal crowd here. Philip and DW and Ann. Graman is here. Never saw him before. Pablo is here. Seth is here. Jack, all regulars. Let's see what else we have. Pablo says, Bernie sounds like he has a crush in AOC. Yeah, he does. He said she was very intelligent last time he was on. Um, Jack says, I've also been thinking of getting a bad constitutional silver for nostalgia's sake. Yeah, I think as a as a keepsake, not even for a monitor, just to have a few around uh, to show people, show your friends or your, your, your kids or something like that. Um, the one thing I'll, I'll, say, I'll say, though, in the links below... I don't think Money Metals Exchange lets you select just dimes. I think when you order a, a face value, they throw in dimes, quarters, and half dollars. That could be fun, too, I suppose, to pick through those. If you want just the dimes, ISD Bullion will sell you just the dimes, uh, and so will Golden Eagle Coin. And we did, oh, Philip says, I like the war nickels. Um, we did a show on that, too, if you can search the small gold. We did one on the war nickels. The war nickels are worth about a buck each, too, based on their 35% silver content. And they've got some other coins in there, but they're heavier than the dimes. And Morty Mine is here. Hello. I hope you enjoyed the Bernie. I know you're a big Bernie fan. The Mercs are cool, too. All right. Philip, you never know when you might need them. Yeah, I think that these are, first of all, the problem with buying copper or buying one-tenth ounce silver is the premiums are too damn high. Shush. Yes, they're very high. The premiums are very high on those coins, and there's no premium, basically, on these. And To me, it's almost like get them while they're still around before they all get thrown into the melter. All right. 100 dimes for $120 is a great deal, says a daily coin, and an awesome way to protect a small portion of wealth. Yeah, and I think you can get them for less than 120 If you look at, I think, Golden Eagle Coin and SD Bull. I think SD Bullion might have the best deal. I think... If you pay by check, you can get it for hundred and twelve dollars, and that's they're worth a hundred and they're worth a dollar ten each in just silver value. So you're getting them. I think they're figuring it's sixty four cents over spot, but you know you're talking a couple of dollars here or there depending on which of the bullion dealers you go to. And Morning Mind says if a, if it were a real breakdown in the system, real silver dime might get you some bread. It's real something. Yeah, I, I I don't I don't there's no downside to these because it's there is a downside to the one tenth ounce uh, silver rounds because they may not be recognized in my opinion, and you're paying like right now if you were to buy them you're paying like twenty three dollars an ounce or silver, whereas here you're paying close to the spot price. 
Silver Eagles will dominate since there's millions of them. Yeah, there's 680 million of them, and probably not a lot of them have been melted down. Um, thing is, they're, they're face stamped a dollar, which may throw some people off. But they are an ounce of silver, too. And Seth says, yes, I think they're great barter grid money down. Now, you also have to remember, you don't want to go overboard because, I mean, you, it's a temporary situation, or you hope it's a temporary situation, we're actually going to need them. Otherwise, I think they're just, I wouldn't say they're amusing, but they're, they're very interesting to historically to realize that there's people alive today that actually transacted in real silver. Um, people over maybe 60 will remember doing, I mean, they were 1964, so you're going back uh, 56, 57 years. I'm not even doing my math. Yeah, 56 years, 55 years. Um, and of course, you don't start transacting when you're born. You generally wait till you're about seven or eight years old. So people that were born in the 50s will remember these coins. Um, so it's, it's an interesting thing as well. And they look identical today. They haven't changed at all. All right. What else do we have? Daily coin. Also, there's an ongoing melt year after year. Yes, and we talked about that. Each year, the number of 90% silver coins goes down. Has to. Can't go up. The only way it can go up is somehow if they find, like they did in 1960, some date in the 60s, they found bags of uh, Morgan silver dollars. They just forgot about. <laughs> but I doubt that's the case. All right. There are estimates. Someone asked the Daily Coin, well, are there estimates? I think either PCGS or NGC have tried to estimate them, but I don't know how you can possibly estimate those also this could the they have um canadian coins were never 90 but they were 80 percent silver so if you run across canadian dimes and quarters then there's the same issue there all right silver stacker for life says he's got 50 silver dimes and 40 silver quarters yeah so 40 silver quarters would be ten dollars face worth of quarters but that's like a thousand how much is that yeah ten dollars face yeah so that would be um I'm getting screwed up in the math here a quarter is going to be worth no it's not worth that much a quarter is going to be worth um let me see i think it's like 250 something like that each i don't have it in front of me i'm just calculating off the top of my head yeah so that's like a hundred dollars yeah hundred dollars worth of quarters it's ten dollars face and it's probably like hundred and twenty five dollars worth which is nice and partisan gorilla says the fascists are on both sides of the podium on the congressional floor yeah i'm surprised how they get away with that fascist symbol there daily coin likes the half dollars and dimes he likes the half dollars yeah A silver stacker for life let's be like canada and free health care for all free everything <laughs> all right what else Precious metals update, everyone. What did I miss? What about 90% silver? You can always go back and listen. Just some basics. You probably know all this stuff already. Just to get everyone else's views on the suitability of these uh, Roosevelt dimes. No one talks about them because there's nothing to talk about. I mean, they're all the same. They're 90%. That's that's their, that's the best thing about them is there's nothing to say about them. Is they're 90% silver and they're small. And they have 0.07234 ounces of silver and... They're still around at a low price. Morning Mime. Yes, Silver, my friend, is from Canada, and they get medical. They have to wait a really long time. Yeah, that's not good. Mike Kearney, small. Would I buy the Mercury Dimes from SD Billion for about $1.20 each? Yep. You could, the Mercury Dimes, sometimes you can get them for the same price as the Roosevelt's, although the Mercury Dimes are often more worn out, especially the earlier dated ones. We've talked about why that is, is because... They didn't mint a lot of dimes and quarters in the 20s because, and they didn't mint them at all in 19, I think it was 1925, because they had melted down the silver dollars during the Pittman Act, and they had to use all the available cylinder, silver to remint silver dollars, and they didn't leave them much silver to mint dimes, quarters, and half dollars. So those coins got really, really worn out. All right, JB went with why pay premiums for coins and not on one ounce squares minted by mints like Credit Suisse and other known mints. Well, 
you have a point. There, there are certain tax issues, I believe, when you buy non-sovereign minted coins. Um, but you can go on the view and ounces and ounces and ounce and try to get it at the lowest price. I did do, I probably won't be able to pull it up tonight, but I did do a chart showing why it doesn't make sense to buy American Silver Eagles when the price is where it is right now. Because you're not going to get them, other than maybe backdated coins, for anything less than $1.79 over spot. And the new ones are going to cost you two fifty over spot. And what I did in the chart was I showed that if you're paying two fifty over spot on a fifteen dollar coin, you're paying. Let's see what it is here. Fifteen dollars. Are you doing two point five divided by two point five divided by fifteen? You're paying like a sixteen percent premium, which is far too high. Uh, you're not going to make that back unless the price rises. You know, if the price rises six. 16%. That's a good increase. Now you're back to square one. All right. You guys are talking about health service in Canada. Mentioned in Bernie. SD billion. It's a Merck sale last summer. 49 cent over spots. Is DB stupid? Well, there's 64 cents. I think that's the best deal right now. I'll give you the link. Or if you're interested, you don't want to look below. Here's the link. I think it'll open up into the Franklin Mint special, but you can find the silver dimes from there they have 64 cents over spot all right more than mine is signed out there's the link for sd bullion um that's a good thing shush okay is it talking about canada silver stacker for life and yeah, they're all talking about canadian health care see bernie it's not really worthwhile getting you on here because you get them all riled up and then they don't focus on the coins this is Saturday Night Silver. This isn't Saturday Night Canadian Healthcare and Socialism. Well, <laughs> Saturday Night Socialism. I guess that's what you want it to be. You're talking about people breaking their legs, trying to get medical care. It's not working out. All right. Well, then, unless anyone um, has anything else they want to add, talk about these dimes, um, I'll give you the Bernie countdown on my own. I've, I've already sent them home. Uh, we'll count to 10 and if we have nothing else, we'll see you tomorrow night. I got some interesting crypto stories and some interesting uh, gold and silver stories Some interesting news stories and we'll cover those all tomorrow. We like to keep Saturday night Set aside for silver Saturday night silver with small gold and uh, that's what it was. So thank you very much We'll give you 10 Second Bernie countdown and we'll see you then tomorrow if we don't have any more comments 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1%, 0. Have a good night and don't starve to death. Thank you, Bernie. down.